Bruce. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. Voice of the NBA on this network, Chris Broussard. Let's bring him in. We have all sorts of stuff. Okay, my theory, Chris Broussard, when you read that article at ESPN about the dysfunction, uh, my first takeaway, it's not just magic. It's not just Palenka. It's just holistically, it's a bunch it's of... everybody. <laughs> Except LeBron, actually. LeBron was getting all the criticism a few months ago. And he's the guy that was on the right. sidelines in his pool. <laughs> Now, you guys can call me when it's over. Right. Let me just say this, though. It does, there is something about this article that I would like if I was the Lakers. It gives us a clear path. I'm not crossing my fingers for free agents. It, it, do you know what it tells me? I got Lonzo in a number four pick. I got two young forwards averaging 18. I'm going to change the narrative. I'm going to bring somebody in. I'm not going to sit there and wait for somebody to read that article and have to choose me over the Celtics. If I'm the Lakers, I'm like, okay, this article's so bad Let's be aggressive, change the narrative, make a trade. Yeah, if you're sitting there now crossing your fingers on Jimmy Butler, if I'm his agent, I'm not sending him into that. Well, everything you said seems, sounds rational, but everything we read in that article says they're not going to do the rational thing. I mean, I, I get what you're saying, because here's the thing. First of all, this shows you, I said it on this couch, this is why Jeannie Buss, when Magic stepped away, she had an opportunity Clean it up. The first call should have been Masai Ujiri. Call David Griffin. Bring in a, a legitimate basketball executive to rerun things. Like, at this point right now, what are we, a month before free agency, essentially? You, your front office should have been revamped, set with a, a real basketball person. Your coaching hiring shouldn't have been the drama that it was. Like, all that should have been taken care of, and this story would have been irrelevant. It would have been nice reading, all oh, the drama, but it wouldn't have been relevant anymore. That's what they should have done. Obviously, they didn't. You made a good point about agents. The Rich Paul, you know, trying to run the organization, I look at that like as a report, like, he's doing what a lot of agents would love to do. Sure. Get that power, right? Sure. And but the, and if I'm a reporter and I'm like the quote about Rich and players know he's trying to trade you and coaches know he wants you fired, that was from another agent, a competitor. Like if I'm a reporter and another reporter has this great access, he's breaking all the stories that I don't have access to, I'm going to be upset about that too. So other agents, I don't blame Rich Paul for trying to do that. I blame the Lakers for allowing him on the plane and all that stuff. But other agents to the degree that they can influence their players, they're going to say, number one, they obviously don't trust Rob Palenka. They obviously used to compete with Rob Palenka. So when they break their presentation to their players, because they're going to break down, here's what the Lakers can offer, you know, money, everything else, here's what the Raptors have, here's what the Clippers have, so on and so forth. They're going to say, you got a president, you can't believe a word he says. He says Kobe Bryant had dinner with somebody who's deceased. You know, so that was in the article. You're not too, gonna, yeah. yeah, that Kobe Bryant had dinner with Heath Ledger, who was dead at the time. You know, so you you got that. He, are you gonna be able to believe him when you say he says he's not gonna trade you? Then they will not want them because if Rich has got that much juice and on the plane and everything, the players are gonna be like, "This is the guy." Like, there, it's tempting. Re Agents are always stealing other players from people. So that's where an agent will feel like, I don't want him there. So you make a good point about... You engineer the deal. Right. Don't, and, don't wait for Jimmy Butler to maybe land. Now, I do think you could get Butler. I, look, I think you're not getting KD anyway, Kevin Durant. I don't think you were getting Kawhi. Clay's going to stay in Golden State. Kyrie, he's one who I don't think he was coming anyway. But a lot of what... He didn't, like, he wanted to get away from with LeBron was just the circus atmosphere. And this is worse. Right. Like, and it, whether it's LeBron's fault or just the, the atmosphere around LeBron because he's so big, at least in Cleveland, you had a competent GM in David Griffin who could, you would think, control it to some degree. Now Kyrie may look, LeBron's so big, the circus is still there, and now there's no front office to even control it. There's, yeah, I, you know, think, I think Kyrie's a... I think it's I think it's a pipe dream. I think it's a I, I've been saying this for months. I think it's a hail mary right, for Jimmy I Butler. But I but I do I think Butler they could because I do think he would love to be in Hollywood in a yes. big city. And let me just throw I, this out there. Uh, I I said a couple months I said this several months ago and many laughed. I said the guy that I think fits is Bradley Beal. 
is that we see this all the time in sports. If you have a guy in sports, I'll take Eric Ebron, on the tight end for the Lions. He's in a dysfunctional organization, Lions. You put him in a more functional organization, the Colts with Andrew Luck. Eric Ebron goes from bust to star. Victor Oladipo. Little dysfunction with Russell Westbrook right. in the backcourt. You put him in the highly functional Pacers, and he flourishes. Bradley Beal the, is a 20-point-a-game guy. Wall gets hurt. John Wall, who can be dysfunctional. He averages 27 without him. I think we're looking at a Victor Oladipo, more talented, though. I was going to say, he's uh, yeah. better than Oladipo. I think we're looking at an Eric Ebron situation where you have a very talented guy, but in a dysfunctional environment, he is somewhat suppressed below his market value. I think Bradley Beal, only 25, very high basketball IQ, completely committed. Did have some injuries earlier in his career, but I think, so I'll just throw it out to you. They Beal need a guard. Be, Beal would be perfect. They need Lonzo Ball. They need they need guards and draft picks and young players. Well, here's the problem. We don't know what, like, who's running the Wizards right now? They don't have a front office yet. So I don't know where the they want Lonzo for Beal came from because who's the G? They don't have a president yet. Ernie Grunfeld stepped away or he got fired. So until we know who's running them, we can't be certain that they're going to give up Bradley Beal, or that they even like Lonzo Ball. Let's see who the new guy is, you know? So that's the first challenge. But that being said, I'm look, if they could get Bradley Beal for Lonzo Ball, he fits perfectly you do that in a heartbeat. Bradley Beal had a, an argument to be on that third team all yes. NBA. I, I actually had Clay on mine instead of Kimba, but Beal was in that conversation. He'd be great with LeBron, can shoot the basketball, a, can make plays. And just say, hey, we'll give you Lonzo. Have your pick, Kuzma Ingram, and give you the draft pick. And no, then I, I, I agree. Now, obviously, that takes you out of the Anthony Davis. Okay, but that's by I, I contend that the, the better fit in 2019 is not a big, but it's a shooting guard. LeBron has proven he plays great with guards. He struggles at times with bigs. I've been on this Bradley Beal thing for months. I think he's a perfect fit. LeBron plays with shooters and high IQ guys. This past year, the Lakers had no shooters and crazy guys. It was the exact opposite of what LeBron works with. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it? No, look, I like Bill. I, I still would try to make a push for Anthony Davis, but I like Bradley Bill a lot. And if and and we'll see who runs the Wizards if they if they like Lonzo that much. Because uh Alvin Gentry likes Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram. And if they like that fourth pick as much as that third. Did this article surprise you? 40 seconds. Did it surprise you? This no, article. it really just kind of confirmed everything <laughs> that we were hearing and surmised from all that's going on. Jeannie's Kind of lost with the way things are going. Mom and pop operation. Linda Rambis has an inordinate amount of power. Rob, that's his rep. True or not that he's, you know, a serial liar. How about this? Coaching staff member said about the Lakers offseason, we all had the same reaction the basketball world did. Like, what the <laughs> blank are we doing? Not only are we not getting shooting, we're also getting every basket case left on the market. That's and what that, we're all saying. Right. That was the feeling of the basketball <laughs> world. It was like, what in the world is going on? Chris Broussard, yes. great stuff. Matt Barnes, good seeing you, bud. Thanks. Uh, coming up next, I'm analytics, but I like my analytics, and something's happened in the NBA playoffs that I really appreciate. That's next.